This year at CES 2018, Audio-Technica gave us a first look at their ATH ANC 700 BT Quiet Point headphones. I know dropping $350 on a pair of headphones is a lot for some people, so a lot of people have eagerly been waiting for these headphones to drop. Here's what I like, what I don't like, and how the ANC on the Audio-Technica ANC 700 BT compares to the Sony 1000 XM2. Okay, from here on out, I'm going to be referring to these headphones as the Quiet Point. The Audio Technical Quiet Points currently retail for $199 and come in black, and I think a silver version will be released as well. On the other hand, the Sony 1000 XM2, which have the best active noise cancellation on the market right now, usually retails for $350. If you want to pick either of these headphones up, I'll have links in the description below, and if you use the links, it really helps out the channel. Check them out because Sony headphones routinely go on sale, and I wouldn't be surprised of the quiet points do as well. Okay, let's go over what comes in the box. The Audio Technica quiet points come included with a carrying pouch that admittedly looks nice, but if you do plan on traveling a lot with these headphones, I recommend you invest in a hard shell carrying case. The quiet points also come included with a 3.5 to 2.5 millimeter audio cable and a USB A to micro USB cable. Personally, since this 2018, I really feel these headphones should have used a USB-C port instead. For some reason, only the premium headphones like the Bowers and Wilkins PX and Bang & Olufsen H9i have USB-C ports. I also don't like how the audio jack on these headphones is not so easy to reach, which makes finding a better quality audio cable for these headphones a little harder. When it comes to build quality, the quiet points are using very similar materials to the Sony's. They have a stainless steel frame, plastic body panels, and synthetic on the headband and ear cups, but they're very lightweight coming in at just 247 grams, whereas the Sony 1000 XM2 weigh in at 277 grams, and even though 30 grams might not seem like a lot, it's really noticeable when you have them on your head. And as a result, the Audio-Technica quiet points are very comfortable to wear either when you're out walking or if you're at your desk getting some work done. I dare even say they're as comfortable as the Bose QC35s because they have very little clamping force, they have have very spacious oval ear cups that encase your ears and don't rest on your earlobes. Since your ear cups pivot and swivel a good deal, they should be able to conform to most head types. And since minimal padding actually makes contact with your skin, overheating also isn't a problem. I have a big head because I'm awesome, but I have no problems wearing these headphones for long periods of time. Whereas with the Sony's, yes, they're still comfortable and they're big head approved, but since their ear cups aren't as spacious and since there is a lot of padding, they'll rest on your earlobes or you'll probably end up with shorty ear cups after a while. Now when it comes to battery life, Audio-Technica advertises a battery life of 25 hours. And with ANC and Bluetooth turned on and with the volume set at 50%, these guys average 23 hours of playback time. Not bad, but with ANC turned off, these guys managed to hit 30 hours of playback time. These headphones are using Bluetooth 4.1 and they have a range of about 30 feet with direct line of sight. There's no connection issues if your phone is nearby or if it's in your pocket. But if there's a single wall between your audio source and your headphones, then the signal will start to stutter. But more importantly, these headphones can only be connected to one device at a time, which does suck. And there is a good amount of latency when watching videos. But you can always just use them passively with a wired connection. Now let's talk about their active noise cancellation performance. When you get into the $200 price range, ANC can be very hit or miss. The ANC on the quiet points does a good job of blocking out constant low frequency sounds like road noise if you're on the bus. Most other ANC headphones do a good job of this as well, but when it comes to blocking out chatter, these headphones don't really block out too much. But what really matters is that these headphones don't hiss or put a lot of cabin pressure on your eardrum with ANC turned on. That's the main reason why I can't wear the Bose QC35s. They produce a lot of cabin pressure and they give me headaches. Obviously the ANC on the quiet points isn't as good as the Sony 1000 XM2, but they should get the job done if you're on the bus on your way to school or work. I'm going to
But when it comes to sound quality, that's where these Audio Technica shine. They have a neutral sound signature, but with just the right amount of punchy bass. They have a wider sound stage than the Sony's, and their bass doesn't bottom out. But this is with their ANC turned off. These headphones sound very different with ANC turned on. Their sound stage tightens up, and the bass isn't as punchy. So naturally, I prefer to listen to these headphones with ANC turned off. When using these headphones with a wired connection, I did notice the highs were a little crisper, but mainly, I've been using these headphones with a wired connection as monitoring headphones for the last few videos I've put out. But if you do plan on wearing these headphones out in public, just know there is a considerable amount of sound leakage. But now we need to talk about my least favorite feature on these headphones, and that's their touch controls. Unlike the Sony's, which have a touch pad on their right ear cup, the Kwai Points have three touch points on their left ear cup. Tap the logo once to play or pause your music, tap above the logo to raise the volume, tap below the logo to lower the volume, and swipe up or swipe down to skip or go back a track. But keep in mind, when adjusting the volume on these headphones, you're adjusting the local volume, not the volume on your source. So if you max out the volume on the headphones, it doesn't mean the volume is maxed out on your phone, and I find it very annoying. But the touch controls on the quiet points in general suck. Playing and pausing a track is fine, but trying to skip or go back a track almost never works. And since the touch controls are on the left ear cup, it doesn't feel natural for me since I'm a righty. The touch controls on the Sony's are almost flawless. Personally, I would have very much preferred if Audio Technica used actual buttons here, because I find myself just using my phone to control my music playback instead, because it's much easier. Okay, and here is the microphone test, and the short answer is, the microphone isn't that good. But this audio clip is being recorded by the microphone on the Audio-Technica ANC-700BT, so you can be the judge of that. So, the final verdict on the Audio-Technica ANC-700BT is that they're good for $200 headphones. They have good build quality and they're very comfortable to wear, their ANC should get the job done for your bus ride commute without causing you any headaches, and they have a very decent battery life. But where these headphones stand out is their sound quality. They sounded much better than I expected. Their Bluetooth connectivity isn't the best because of their latency and only being able to be connected to one device at a time, so these might not be the best for a power user who wants to quickly switch from one source to another, or for someone who plans on consuming a lot of video with these. But the biggest letdown on these headphones has got to be the touch controls. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. Support the channel by clicking on the links down below, and I'll catch you next time.